Oh, this is bad. Mommy doesn't like crisper sounds. Good morning, friends. Good morning. Happy International Dance Like a Chicken Day. I've never heard of this holiday, but I figure, why not? Why not take this opportunity to dance like a chicken? I'm not sure I know how to dance like a chicken. When I think about dancing like a chicken, I think I need to kind of twitch a little bit. i got to make my head do a little something, I think. So, I don't know, but I'm going to try, and I hope you guys out there will try with me. Um, I am Miss Wendy, and this is Rose, and we're with the Rockbridge Regional Library, and this is our story time. Uh, we are going to celebrate chickens all day, <laughs> so for no real reason, except I think we should all just appreciate the chickens in our lives. Mm -hmm. We may not ever even know those chickens but we might enjoy their eggs <laughs> so and their everything else. Um, so, yeah, let's get started with our Hello Friends song. Mm -hmm. And it looks like I do have some friends who are here. Good morning, Isaac. How are you? And Theo and Finn. Mm -hmm. Hi, guys. I'm so glad you're with us today. Do you guys like chickens? Mm -hmm. Good. I like chickens. I like chickens a lot. <clears throat> I don't know why they're funny. They, they, they can be a little nervous, too. Like, they might chase you and peck you. I don't know. I've never really met a chicken or had a relationship with a chicken. <laughs> anyway, hello, friend song. Do you guys remember this one? We're going to say hello, and it's going to be time to say hello. Okay, are you ready? One, two, three. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. Hello, friends. It's time to say hello again. Hello, friends. Hello, Isaac. Hello, Theo. It's time to say hello, Finn. <laughs> All right, so to warm up this morning, you know, I really enjoyed having the scarves, personally. I really enjoyed, you know, flinging things around and Rumor has it that some brother's underwear went flying, I've heard. <laughs> it's true. So get a scarf or a dish towel or, <coughs> excuse me, anything that you can do this with. It could be anything. It could be anything, a piece of string. It could even be something small like that. And we are going to wave our scarves together. Rose, would you like a scarf? Okay. We wave our scarves together, we wave our scarves together, we wave our scarves together, because it's fun to do. Okay, what should we do? Throw them in the air? Okay, we're going to toss our scarves in the air. Okay, are you ready? We toss our scarves in the air. We toss our scarves in the air. We toss our scarves in the air because it's fun to do. Now what should we do? Peekaboo? Peekaboo. Everybody loves peekaboo. Peekaboo. 
We play peekaboo with our scars. We play peekaboo with our scars. Peekaboo with our scars. Because it's fun to do. Awesome. Okay, what can we do next? Do not say ride it like a horse, okay? <laughs> no. What could it be that is chicken like? I don't know. Peck. Peck. <laughs> We're gonna peck our scarves together. Peck our scarves together. That doesn't work. That doesn't work. All right, let's twirl because that's always good with scarves and things. We twirl our scarves together. We twirl our scarves together. We twirl our scarves together because it's fun to do. And since we have our scarves together, what do you say we do a quick popcorn? Kernels. I'll take yellow because I like my popcorn very yellowy. Wait, I want a yellow. You want yellow? Okay, fine. I'll have purple popcorn. I don't mind. Okay, do you remember how to do this one? This one we're going to take our scarves or whatever it is we have and we're going to bunch it in our hands and that's going to be in the pot and then it's going to pop. So be ready to throw your, your popcorn in the air and let it pop. <coughs> All right, are we ready? One, two, three. Popcorn kernels, popcorn kernels in a pot, in a pot. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them till they pop, till they pop again. Popcorn kernels, popcorn kernels in a pot, in a pot. Shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them, shake them till they pop, till they pop. <laughs> nice. All right. I feel warmed up. Hey, all right. Do you need to get some water? Because it's nice to do. <laughs> all right, you guys. Who is ready for a story? You ready for a story, Isaac? Hey, Thea. You ready for a story about chickens? I've got three books about chickens. I mean, it's just crazy. <laughs> you ready for a story, Rose? Oh, okay. Well, I'm ready for a story. So, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, clap your hands. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, stomp your feet. If you're... Everybody get ready for their weird positions to be stuck in. You gotta, every, does anybody else do funny stick in a weird position still like Rose does? Because I, in my head, that's what I think you're all doing. And I, that's what I hope you're doing. <laughs> if you're... Ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, sit real still. If you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, if you're ready for a story, sit real still. You okay, baby? Daddy's getting your water. Okay, guys. There's no better time than the present to discuss chickens. Let us start with our first book. Rose, which one should we do? Chicken Talk, Chicken in Space, or Interrupting Chicken? Interrupting Chicken, good choice. Some of you might be familiar with this one. <clears throat> Interrupting Chicken by David Ezra Stein. <coughs> this book is called Interrupting Chicken, right, Papa? Yes, now please don't interrupt the story. All right, let's see. Interrupting Chicken, 
interrupting chicken. Why don't you come over here? Interrupting Chicken by David Ezra Stein, Candlewick Press. That means that David Ezra Stein not only wrote the words, but he also drew the pictures. So he, he did this whole book, which is super cool. It was bedtime for Little Red Chicken. Okay, my little chicken, said Papa. Are you ready to go to sleep? Yes, Papa, but don't, didn't you forget something? What's that, asked Papa. A bedtime story. Of course, yeah. All right, all right, said Papa. I'll read you one of your favorites. And of course, you are not going to interrupt the story tonight, are you? Oh, no, Papa. I'll be good. The story of Hansel and Gretel. <clears throat> Hansel and Gretel were very hungry. Deep in the woods, they found a house made of candy. Nibble, nibble, nibble. They began to eat the house until an old woman who lived there came out and said, What lovely children. Why don't you come inside? They were just about to follow her when... Out jumped a little red chicken and she said, Don't go in! She's a witch! So Hansel and Gretel didn't. The end. Oh. <laughs> chicken. Yes, Papa? You interrupted the story. Try not to get so involved. I'm sorry, Papa. But she really was a witch. Well, you're supposed to be relaxing so you can fall asleep. Let's try another story. I'll be good. <clears throat> the story of Little Red Riding Hood. Take this basket of goodies to Grandma, said Little Red Riding Hood's mother. But don't stray from the path. The woods are full of danger. Red Riding Hood skipped along through the deep forest. By and by, she met a wolf who wished her good morning. She was about to answer him when... Out jumped a little red chicken and she said, Don't talk to strangers! So little red riding hood didn't. The end. Oh. <laughs> chicken. Yes, Papa? You did it again. You interrupted two stories. And you're not even sleepy. I know, Papa. I'm sorry. But he was a mean old wolf. Yes. Now get back into bed. Okay, Papa, let's try one more little story, and I'll be good. The story of Chicken Little. Chicken Little was hit on the head by an acorn. The sky is falling, she thought. She was about to run off and warn Goosey Lucy, Ducky Lucky, Henny Penny, and everyone on the farm. The sky was falling when... Out jumped a little red chicken, and she said, Don't panic! It's just an acorn! So Chicken Little didn't. The end! Oh, little red chicken is saving the day all over the place. Chicken? Yes, Papa? You did it again. <laughs> oh, Papa, I couldn't tell. I couldn't let that little chicken get all upset over an acorn. Please read one more story. I promise. I'll fall asleep. But chicken, said Papa, we're out of stories. Oh no, Papa, I can't go to sleep without a story. Then, said Papa, yawning, why don't you tell me a story? Me tell a story, said Little Red Chicken. Okay, Papa, here we go. Um, <clears throat> Bedtime story for Papa by chicken. Once there was a little red chicken who put her papa to bed. She read him a hundred stories. She even gave him warm milk, but nothing worked. He stayed wide awake all night. That's interrupting. Papa?
night, Papa. Goes into bed. Papa's an interrupting chicken too. <laughs> the end. And now they are both asleep. I love this book. <laughs> Because yes, when you're reading something like Little Red Riding Hood, you want to jump in the book and be like, no, don't do it. Don't you dare do it. So guys, I have, hold on tight. to go get myself a drink of water, so give me just a second. I'll be right back. She also just told me she needs to get some back. Yeah, I've got to do those things. Guys, much better. You I, missed I mean, a chicken what? came out our window. What? A chicken literally came out our window. A chicken came to our window? Yeah. He told jokes. What? A chicken came to our window and told jokes. Yeah. I can't believe I missed that. How did I miss that? I yeah. I always pick the wrong time to go to the bathroom. Darn. <laughs> well that's cool. What a good idea. What a good idea to have visitors come to our window. Well, actually, he just randomly showed up. He just randomly showed up? Well, I mean, I like the idea. If we could have visitors at our window, I wonder if that should happen sometime. Hmm, after story time, I'm going to go look for this chicken and see if I can figure out where he came from. Okay, so, wow, I can't believe I missed that. <laughs> so, it's time for another chicken book. All right, Rose, should we read Chicken Talk? Or chicken in space. Chicken in space. Okay. But you know what? Yeah, let's do that. And then I'll... Yeah, chicken in space. Okay. <clears throat> chicken in space. Do you think this chicken's going to space? Yeah. Okay. By Adam Lairhaupt. Illustrated by 
Shahar Korber. So someone wrote it, Adam Lerhart wrote it, and Shahar Korber did the pictures. Hmm, Chicken in Space by Harper Publishing. <clears throat> Zoe wasn't like other chickens. That's Zoe. She had dreams. She had a plan. Look, space. Her plan, okay, there's ground, there's space, there's sun, there's moon, there's air, and then there's space. She had a pig. Put your hat on, Sam, said Zoe. We're going to space. Before lunch, asked Sam. Asked Sam. Before pie? Is that a good idea? But Zoe was already off. Henry, said Zoe, come to space with us. Oh, thanks, said Henry. I've got space right here. Not open space, said Zoe. Outer space. Henry's like, look, I'm fine. I don't need to go to outer space. Pip, said Zoe, come to space with us. Sounds dangerous, said Pip. Not dangerous, said Zoe, an adventure. Clara, said Zoe, come to space with us. You don't have to, you don't have a ship, said Clara. You can't go to space without a ship. Good point. Not a problem, said Zoe. An opportunity. Oh, I like that. Zoe always finds a way, said Sam. Look, Sam, I found a ship, said Zoe. Of course you did, said Sam. What do you think her ship is here? Basket and balloons. Basket and balloons. Hmm. Think they can get her to outer space? Yeah. Chicken in space! Space, space. Space, space. <laughs> wow, said Zoe. Space is beautiful. So is pie, said Sam. See any pie? Zoe looked. I don't see any pie. Watch out for the ball, said Sam. Psh! Not a ball, shouted Zoe. An asteroid! Ah! Do you think she's pretending? Watch out for the kite, said Sam. Not a kite, a comet. Pshhh. Watch out for the birds, said Sam. Not birds, said Zoe. Attack alien ships. Pop, pop, pop. We're going down, yelled Sam. Prepare for landing, said Zoe. Right. Crash. Perfect, said Zoe. Zoe to ground control. I repeat, Zoe to ground control. We made a perfect landing. Perfect, asked Sam. There isn't any pie. How can it be perfect with no pie? Back at the barn, the animals gathered to hear about Zoe and Sam's big adventure. We went to space, said Sam. We were hit by an asteroid. We dodged a comet and we battled aliens. Everyone was impressed. How did you do it? asked Clara. Zoe always finds a way, said Sam. I just wish we'd found some pie. Zoe tapped on Sam's shoulder. Tap, tap, tap. For me? asked Sam. Is it pie? What do you think? Is it going to be pie? Yeah. I don't know. Not just pie, said Zoe. Zoe, a moon pie. That's a certain type of kind of cake, cookie type thing. It's a real thing. A moon pie. <laughs> Sam broke off a piece of his pie for Zoe, but she was already planning their next adventure. She's already on to the next one. Where do you think they'll go next? Space? I see a pirate hat, so maybe they'll go out into the ocean. Yeah, because I also see that.
Oh, and a snorkel and a fishing pole. Yeah, they're going to the water for sure. Awesome. She can go on a big pirate adventure with Sam. You think Sam will go? I think he'll just be like, I'm going to eat the rest of my pie. He's like, I don't care where you go. Just bring pie and I'll go anywhere with you. I kind of get that. I kind of understand. <laughs> All right, you guys. Without further ado, as it is dance like a chicken day, it's time for us to dance like a chicken. Yeah. I may be a solo chicken out here dancing all by my lonesome. And I'm okay with that. Can you help me with the music? Yeah. I'm gonna do it wrong. Okay, so yeah, because I always do it wrong. So friends out there in story time, stand up for me. Let's get our chicken feet on. Because this is gonna happen, whether we like it or not. <laughs> Alright, so how does it go, Rose? I know the music is but what do I do first? Do I do this? Okay, so we're gonna do this and then we make wings. Okay, so it's beaks, wings, tail, clap. All right, will you help me with the music? Are you guys out there ready to dance like a chicken? Okay, because I am. I've been ready all week. <laughs> all right. I'm going to just do the music and do it too. And I hope, I hope you guys are doing it with me. Everybody up? Okay. One, two, three. You know, it's hard. Just... <laughs> I'm all by myself doing the chicken dance. It's okay because I like chicken. Oh, it's okay because I like little chickens and I don't mind dancing alone. Here's my chicken walk. <laughs> you guys. <laughs> It, when your daughter is looking at you like you're a crazy person, you know you're doing something right. <laughs> Rose has a chicken walk. No, Come on! No. Ah, she no, has the best chicken walk. Lying. I'm not lying. You don't have to do it. I won't force you, but I will say that Rose might have the best chicken walk on the planet. Okay? And maybe one no, day stop. I'll be able to convince stop. you. <laughs> Alright, one more time. <laughs> Get your parents and your friends and your brothers and sisters to do it. And if you moms and dads happen to have a phone and can tape it, send it to me. Then I'll know I'm not alone. Um, I have something to show you guys. Do you remember last week when Miss Amy from Earth Song came to visit us for Teacher Appreciation Week? Well, she told us that she had little eggs that we're hatching soon. And I phoned her yesterday and asked her, have the little chicks arrived yet? Because I thought, perfect day to look at chicks. But unfortunately, they're not due to hatch until Monday. But I do have a picture of the hen. This is Rosie the hen. Oh. <laughs> She's huge. I mean, she looks big from here. I also see a little chick popping out from underneath on the left there. Make it that's, it. that's where the eggs and the hens go. And there's blue ones. There's blue ones. Why is there blue ones? Well, that's probably a different type of um, chick chicken. Miss Bean um, said that she was going to bring in Honey Penny and um, one of her chickens, but she never got to. But she got to bring in some eggs. She did. And we got to see green Really? Maybe it has something to do with what they're eating out in the yard. And here's a closer picture. Look at all those eggs. So the hen, Rosie, is sitting on all those eggs, and they're going to hatch at some point. And in theory, on Monday, I don't know how they know exactly what day, but I will check back with Miss Amy later and see if we can't see those baby chicks when they hatch. So, so, so cool. All right, we've got one last book. <clears throat> Let's see. Okay. Ah! Sorry about that. Just need my pen. 
This one's called Chicken Talk. Words by Newbery Medal winning author Patricia McLaughlin and pictures by Jared Kroska. Krosowska. She wrote Barkus, which is a book that Rose, yeah, Patricia McLaughlin. She's a great author. Chicken Talk! Let's see what this is all about. Where is my Patricia McLaughlin? Pictures by Jarrett J. Karushka. Catherine Teagan Books. <clears throat> Farmer Otis and his wife, Abby, loved their chickens. You have to come around. Their children, Willie and Belle, loved them too. All, <clears throat> all in all, there were 11 hens. Beatrice, called Trixie, Bitsy, Grace, Boo, Joyce, 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 and Joyce, and Pedro. <laughs> there was only one colorful rooster named Pedro who protected his hens from foxes, hawks, and weasels. Abby made them salads with fresh lettuce and arugula from the garden. She collected their eggs in the hen house. Thank you, dear girls, she said as she put the eggs in her basket to sell to the neighbors. Willie and Belle wrote each hen's name on her eggs. Trixie, Bitsy, Boo, Grace, and the seven Joyces. The neighbors liked that. They had their favorite hens. So she's writing the names. Yes. Willie and Belle read books under the big tree. The chickens peered and pecked at the books and cocked their heads at Willie and Belle when they told stories. Every day, Willie let the chickens out of their big pen so they could scratch the dirt for bugs and worms, and they loved being out and about. While Pedro lurked in the yard, watching for danger, <coughs> bless you, the hens sometimes sat on the porch chairs and looked out over the meadow like elegant ladies. Well, they are the Joyces, after all. One morning, Willie had a great shock. Belle, he called. Come quickly. Belle ran from the garden. Willie pointed. Did you write that? Belle looked. She shook her head. In the dirt, they read a message. No more arugula. <laughs> like they, she said she was feeding them arugula, which is a type of lettuce. And the chickens wrote out, no more. We don't want any more arugula. Maybe Mama wrote it, said Belle, or Papa. Willie shook his head. They're at the market, said Willie, and only the chickens eat arugula. Otis and Abby drove to the driveway and walked up the hill with shopping bags. Willie pointed to the words in the scratched in the dirt. Trixie strutted over and looked at Otis and Abby with her bright, beady eyes. Trixie wrote that sentence, whispered Otis. Yes, said Abby. Don't tell anyone, said Otis. They'll think we're nutty. Abby nodded. I thought Trixie liked arugula. This is Trixie the hen. And they, they, they're convinced that Trixie has maybe written these words, but they're like, don't tell anybody because they're going to think we're a little bit on the loony side. When Abby went to collect eggs in the morning, she called, Another message! Otis, Willie, and Belle came running. The sentence read, The fox is not intelligent. Smart. It's basically saying the fox is not smart. Otis looked at Pedro, which is the rooster. I heard a kerfuffle near the pen last night. Good job, Pedro, called Otis. I heard your squawking and flapping of wings. When I came out, the hens were safely in their hen house, and you looked very proud. Do you think there will be more chicken talk? asked Abby. Yes, said Otis. Yes, said Belle. And there was. Willie and Belle found more chicken talk the next day under the tree. More stories about brave chickens. Okay, all right, we're getting the message. That's Boo, said Willie. She always has her beak in a book. They learn their letters from looking at our stories, said Belle. Soon the secret came out. Trip, the mailman, found a sentence in the dirt by the mailbox. You drive too fast! Cheerful chickens cross this road! Did you write that, Otis? asked Trip. No, said Otis. 
Bitsy did. She's bossy. Sounds almost poetic, said Trip. Too poetic for a chicken. No one in town will believe that your chickens can write. I don't believe it myself. And the townspeople didn't believe it. How could a chicken write? Why would a chicken write? No other chickens in town wrote messages in the dirt. Come see for yourself, Trip, said Otis. Put up your tent and spend the night. Mm. Trip brought his small brown tent and sleeping bag and pillow. He set up near the chicken yard. Everyone went to sleep. There was a full moon. Early in the morning, while Trip was still sleeping, Willie let the chickens out of their pen. In the kitchen, Otis smelled as he drank his co smiled as he drank his coffee, and soon it happened. Outside, there was a loud howl from Trip. Otis opened the kitchen door and looked out. Trip clutched his pillow. His tent collapsed on one side. He pointed at the message in the dirt. You snore, and there is a snake in your tent. <laughs> ah! A small snake slithered off into the bushes. It's true, said Trip, trying to catch his breath. Who wrote that? Pedro walked up to them, his eyes shining. I'd say it was Pedro, said Otis. And you, said Willie. Now everyone in town knew about the chicken talk. Being the mailman, Trip saw everyone, and he told them how he was saved by a chicken talk. Everyone in town brought more eggs and wanted to know the chicken talk of the day. And there was lots of chicken talk. Too hot. Can we have a fan? Much too much rain. We need an umbrella. There are new chicks. Come see. Has Grace written anything? Asked Abby one day. Grace is shy. Maybe she doesn't have anything to say, said Otis. Grace was Otis's favorite hen. She had golden feathers lined in black. Sometimes the sunlight made her feathers gleam like jewels. <clears throat> she is quiet, said Abby. I like the quiet but it wasn't quiet for long. On Sunday morning, early, there were seven messages. Too many Joyces. I'm the real Joyce. I'm not Joyce and not me. I've never been a Joyce. I'll never be a Joyce. No more Joyces. What will we do, said Abby. Nothing, said Otis. They'll tell us. And they did. Names were found all over the dirt yard. Willie and Belle discovered them in the driveway and in the pen by the barn. Josie, Louisa, May, Alcott, the real Joyce, and Jane, and Mickey, and Emily Dickinson, and Belinda. <laughs> Trip again found one name in the dirt by the mailbox. Who's Belinda? she called. One of the Joyce's new names, said Otis. And then it was quiet. Peaceful, said Otis. Papa, said Willie. What? We'll never tell. We'll never tell all the white feathered Joyces apart, no matter what they have named themselves. Otis smiled. I know, and I and believe me, they'll tell us more chicken talk," said Belle. In front of them, scratched in the dirt, there were two short sentences: "We love you. Good night." Grace came over to all of them. Grace whispered, "Otis, it was you." Grace, said Abby. Grace, said Willie and Belle together. It was the kind of chicken talk they loved. <laughs> ah, what do you think? What do you think the chicken at the... Well, a chicken at the window did talk, didn't he? Or she? Does Spot talk? No. no. <laughs> well, guys, it has been a pleasure celebrating International Dance Like a Chicken Day. I don't mind dancing like a chicken. It's fun. You find yourself today just... Out of nowhere, dance like a chicken or walk like a chicken. I mean, it's fun. Let it, let it go. Just be great, you know. I don't know. <laughs> anyway, I am gonna. We're gonna sing our hand washing song because chances are we need a snack. I mean, I do. And so, and then we'll say goodbye till tomorrow. And tomorrow's Friday, so let's sing. Are you ready? Tops and bottoms. Tops and bottoms. Tops and bottoms. In between. In between, rub them all together, rub them all together, now they're clean. 
squeaky clean again. Tops and bottoms, tops and bottoms, in between, in between. Rub them all together, rub them all together. Now they're clean, squeaky clean. Cluck, cluck. All right, all aboard. It's time to get on the chicken train. <laughs> The goodbye chicken train. <coughs> Are you ready? Are you going to join this train? Yeah. All right. Well, I'm on this train solo once again. That's all right. And all aboard. Do a little scratch. <laughs> oh. The goodbye train is leaving. See ya soon. Cluck, cluck. Oh, the goodbye chicken train is leaving. See ya soon. Cluck, cluck. Oh, the goodbye chicken is leaving. The goodbye chicken is leaving. Oh, the goodbye chicken is leaving. See ya soon.